Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. It's the fifth day of Inktober now, and I am about to start my fifth drawing for the challenge. The prompt today was chicken. So of course the first thing I thought of was just drawing the animal a chicken. And I actually really like chickens. I had chickens two different times when I was a kid. And I love taking care of them and everything. So this isn't just a chicken because it's the easiest thing to draw. It's a chicken because I just really like chickens. <laughs> so I'm really happy. Today I was able to get my sketch done, my pencil sketch, before the stream all done and I can just start inking right away and I got it done so early this time that I was able to get some laundry done and have an early lunch so that's super awesome so I'm feeling good about this stream I really don't want to spend more than an hour on the actual inking each day so I'm hoping I'll be able to stay around that time today, but we'll see. I'm not going to rush or anything. So I'm using a reference image that I got from a cool uh, website or um, I don't know if the site is live, but I signed up a couple of years ago at least and it's an email list right now where every week they send you free reference images and by free um, I mean, you are free to use them as an artist for whatever purposes you like. It has to be, I believe, as a, it just has to be a reference, so you can't just like print the image and call it your own photography or something, but for what I use them for, it's an extremely good website, or I think they're, when I first signed up, they were going to be building a website where you subscribe and then you have access to the entire library of images at all times and you can search and look by category and everything but it's been a couple years now I'm still getting the emails every week but I haven't actually heard anything about subscribing to the website other than they had they had some sort of class or something that you could subscribe to but the the price was just way more than I could afford it was like a couple thousand dollars or something <laughs> I was like, if I'm gonna be spending a couple thousand dollars I'm gonna be going back to school and what do you know I am so <laughs> good thing I didn't spend the, my money on that but yeah I got this reference image of this chicken from one of those weekly emails I'm really happy because I don't I don't remember any other time that I've had the opportunity to use one of these references. This is actually, these reference images are actually what I spent a bunch of time on and ended up wasting a bunch of time on yesterday trying to find a good reference image for the pose I was looking for, but I just didn't find one. Looking through my folder and looking through my backlog of emails that I haven't yet uh, saved the images from. So what I'm doing here is filling in the background because I edited this photo to be really high contrast. Because when you're using mostly just, like all I've got here is the white paper the black ink and then I have blue ink thanks to my art snacks box inktober box but that's not it's not a lot to create a lot of different shades and I don't want to do you can put water in your ink you know don't put it in here but get a separate little dish and and water it down to get some different shades of gray but that's, I think, what made my ink bleed through on a previous Art Snacks uh, Inktober 
either last year or the year before one of my drawings I did that and it led through onto the next page and I don't want that to happen again so I'm just using the straight ink not using any any water to thin it so going back to my original topic I made the reference image really really contrasty so it's it's I took all the color out there's no need for that and turned up the contrast I put a filter on it to really get the black and the white to stand out and then there's also a lot of grays in there that I can I can try to imitate here but because of that that's why I'm filling in this background because the background it was all in shadow and this is a white chicken so this actually is great because the chickens is naturally white so it'll really really stand out against this black background I thought it would be good to start from the top down and get this done first and I don't know if you can see on the camera but I actually drew in where I want the shadows to be where I want the dark ink to be just another way to help me get this done faster so right now I'm working on a guest comic for my very good and I dare say my best friends web comic And even though it's just going to be two pages, I'm doing a four panel comic, two on each page. I'm going to be featuring four characters, the four main characters as far as how far I've seen in the comic, and Angel Reaper. But even something that seems simple like that actually takes so quite a bit of time. And I'm learning myself how much time it takes. Because I've not... I tried to make a comic, a web comic, when I was in high school, I think. Or just out of high school. But that was already a lot of work. I think I got two or three pages done ever. <laughs> and then the work became too much and I sort of gave up on it. And back then, I what I didn't know the best techniques for preparing a story. Now I do, but I haven't tried to do a comic or anything in a long, long time. So I'm learning now, based on the knowledge I have, the skills I have, how long it takes me to make a comic. I didn't know this would happen. I'm getting some great texture that really imitates well the background texture in this picture. Because of course the chickens are walking around on like dirt, so it's really grainy. And this looks this looks really good. This is nice and grainy. I think what I what I'm doing is putting it really on its side. Not, of course, there needs to be not too much ink on it. Not too much ink on the brush, still. Like right there. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And I'm making sure to do all my brush strokes in this direction because um, this ink isn't perfectly dark. It's not like if you were to put down black in a computer program and it's just a perfect black all the way through, like there are still varying areas where some is a little bit lighter, some's a little darker. Of course, for my online presentation of these images, I've been 
increasing the blacks. I like to use the levels um, feature, I guess you could call it. The levels feature in Photoshop. Because it helps also if there's any sort of messy parts thanks to your hand or something and it just didn't erase away. ink I've used. Yeah, still pretty close to the top. I have a feeling that this year I'm going to use a lot of this ink in this ink pot. And it's going to be exciting for me to see how much did I use. So I don't usually use so much ink all at once, all in one month or something. Usually go through my supplies this fast. Because I get bored, so I like to change it up and use a different, you know, I work on one piece and then I use a different medium for the next piece. Otherwise, I just get too bored. Too bored. That's why I'm always making trouble for myself when I decide to do a series of pieces because I always want them to be made with the same medium. So then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm tired of working with this. But I still have 10 more of these to do. <laughs> I'm always making it hard for myself. But I like to do series because that's what I find myself attracted to. I love it when I can see a whole set of pieces that is meant to all go together. And of course, I want to make art that I myself am interested in. And that's why I end up making projects that are hard for me. My own projects are difficult for me. It's all for the best, I think, though, because if you don't make them difficult, You'll never improve, you'll never grow. Your art will never, therefore, get better, either thematically or technically. So it's really important to challenge yourself. And that's why this the Inktober challenge is a thing. Because this is a challenge in so many different ways. It's a challenge to work with the materials. It's a challenge to get yourself to work on it properly each day like you should in order to get it all done. It's a challenge to do a drawing every single day. It's a challenge to think of what to draw, whether you're using the, the prompt list or not. You need to think of something to draw. like a mental challenge. It's a it's training you in so many different ways. It's helping your traditional media skills improve, your planning, creative thinking of course. Especially if uh, with traditional media it's great because if you do something you didn't intend to, then you have to learn to deal with that. Either start over you know, if it's such a bad, a bad thing. And it's not necessarily a mistake, especially if you're able to find a way to work with it. But you do something that really makes it troublesome to continue. There's all those choices to be made. Another thing that's a challenge about this is working it in around your regular stuff. You might be trying to get these done 
in between going to work or if you're like me and you have to make your own hours to get stuff done it's even harder because it's because I've done this Inktober both when I was you know working a job where you go in and you work for your set hours and and that's how you get paid and also when you have to just make your own hours you're only answerable to yourself really and it's actually much harder now because it's so easy to to just get lost doing this and then you have other responsibilities you're neglecting and that is not good I don't think that's a successful challenge Of course, if you plan your month around this, that's a little different. You say October, I'm doing nothing but Inktober, and that's my project for the month. And even then, that's you have to plan that. Well, if you are being really professional, you have to plan it. <laughs> You just drop everything and say, oh, never mind, i sorry about all my deadlines, but I'm doing Inktober instead. That's totally unprofessional. <laughs> that is no good. Well, that's something I've been struggling with with these is I'm spending way too much time on this. And I have other important things to also put time in every day on but I'm getting better so the challenge is working I am learning I'm improving Sarah welcome I'm glad you could make it today try and pitch my inktober designs to my clients <laughs> that's actually something that Something similar, last year I learned of an artist that makes a book every year, like publishes a book every year of her Inktober stuff and has pre-orders out throughout the month or something like that when people place their order for it and then whoever ordered within the time limit or something then she orders that many books. I thought that could be a good idea for me, but I don't have enough interested people. That's something I've learned this year is that I just don't have a big enough audience right now to do stuff like that. Because I've offered, you know, special, special discounts on stuff in my Etsy shop or promoted my chibi commissions, that kind of stuff, and just not enough interest, not enough people who actually have the funds to go in for something like that. So I won't be doing an Inktober book just yet, but it's an idea that I'm not ignoring. <laughs> just going to keep that in mind. Oh, you can't wait until I can start publishing books. Me too. That's my, I mean, you know this already. <laughs> so that's my ultimate, ultimate goal. I just want to publish books, either like a yearly art book, where it has maybe not everything I've done, but all the highlights of that year in one book. Or a themed book. Maybe I'll make illustrations for it all throughout the year. And then, of course, I'd really love, once I learn how to write, write books. Well, I can, I can technically write. Like I'm good with English, but <laughs> I don't know how to write stories well. But I would love to write some sort of story book or something. 
It doesn't even necessarily need to be a storybook. I've thought of stuff like do a poetry book and illustrate the poems. Everything like that. Yeah, books. That's what I really want to do. I think a poetry book would be good with black and white ink art kind of like this. I don't know why. Maybe it's because with poetry you just kind of... A lot of time it's a really white page because there's so little actual letters because poems are... You know, they don't usually fill up the page like this. It's usually like this little... Like this. I just need to learn more about writing. I can't wait to go to school. Can't wait to go to school this semester. I'm glad I went to a advisor. Because she knew exactly which classes I should take to get back on track and also to reach my goal of getting this double major. So I already have like my class list written down. I just need to actually register once I can. Do I poem? I actually do. Not often, but just I have two different notebooks where I, over the years, when I just feel the mood, <laughs> I've written poems. And I have two notebooks because one of them is for haiku. The other one is just free form. But I also like the idea of poems that have a structure. I mean, of course, I like haiku. But also, sonnets are... Sonnets are fun to read, and I love epic poetry. And I don't mean epic like, oh man, that's epic. <laughs> but epic like you know, the literary term epic poem, which is more like a story, but it's written with, um, it's written in verse rather than like prose. That's another thing I've thought of. I was like, okay, what if I tell a story as an epic poem and illustrate that? I don't know. Okay, this whole leg needs to be black behind it. I love this texture I'm getting with this brush. It's doing a good job of imitating the texture in the background of this reference image. Oh, I missed a whole spot. How could I? I missed a whole spot on the back of the chicken. I just thought it was done. Chicken. How could I miss this spot for you, chicken? I hope this isn't bleeding through. Yay. Yep, I'm definitely not thinning my ink with water. I think that's what the problem was last year or the year before when I used this, this sketchbook. I think it's already looking like a chicken. I mean, ignoring the graphite, the outline, the background. Makes the negative space look like a chicken already. And I'm tempted to go over the back again because it's... I want the ink to be darker, but I spend my time doing that. I'm not going to be able to hit my goal of getting this done within an hour. 
get it done in an hour or thereabouts. An hour and 15 would be okay. Good. I need to add a little more dark here and there. I just want to get this stuff that I actually outlined. Get that done first. It really does have an amazing silhouette. Yeah, I think it's thanks to spending a little time editing the reference image itself to make, to up the contrast, really help bring that shape out, that chicken shape. I don't know if I would have thought to do it this way and actually ink the background if I hadn't played around with the reference image in the first place. The whole reason I went in to edit was because the original image here, the reference image, was really dark and you could hardly see any contrast even though it was a white chicken on a dark shadowy background it was just so so poorly lit I guess yeah, almost done. I like how fast this dries on this paper unlike that other sketchbook that dang sketchbook they actually sent with this Year's box. Just so disappointing. I'm glad I switched to the sketchbook from two Inktobers ago. So much less frustration. I also switched my sketching pencil today because I realized I was using a softer pencil and I should have been using a hard pencil since I wanted to erase this graphite. switch to my H3 and I think erasing is going to be much happier it's going to be a much happier experience this time just a little bit left around the chicken reference image was poorly lit in the first place overall it's actually pretty good because when I turned up the contrast the white chicken stood out super good against the dark background okay now let's do just a little bit of stuff like this just get a little bit of Texture and the rest of the background. Now I keep my brush pretty dry. Now I'm gonna dip it. I'm gonna wipe it off really good. So I get that awesome brush texture. Sort of looking at the reference image. I'm not copying these background marks, but looking to see how what their distribution sort of looks like. 
get an idea of what a natural distribution of these what a natural random distribution would look like. I don't know if that makes any sense. I want it to look organic, but I need to look at the reference to know what what an organic look would be. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing. It's actually not it's not white here. The chicken's white, but the background is not actually white. I'm just going to go over, now my brush, brush is super dry, just add the final little texture everywhere, final for the background that is. Oh, there. I'll clean this brush out. I need to be a little kinder to my brush, it's starting to get little hairs poking out like this. But the ink gets so far in there, I've been really smushing it in my water bowl, trying to be nicer to it so it doesn't get so messed up. <laughs> At least when I smush it, smush it on the side instead of straight down in the middle. Use the blue ink today. But we'll see. I considered making the comb and its face and its little, uh, what do they call this? Waddle or something, I think. Making that blue rather than its natural red. Uh, I think I should wait till the end and see what I think before I do something like that. Can I get a new brush or was it a special art snacks item? Well, technically I can get a new brush. I have tons of art snacks brushes and then I have brushes that I bought on my own before I started getting art snacks. But I would prefer to keep using this one just to stick as close to possible to the Art Snacks Inktober Challenge, but it's not so bad right now that I can't keep using it. If I'm nicer to it, maybe it'll actually last through the whole <laughs> the whole event too. Well, I just have to wait and see. And I'm sure I could if I really wanted to. I'm sure I could buy this exact brush because Art Snacks, even if it's an Art Snacks exclusive item in a box, it's usually for sale on their shop, their online shop. But I think rather than doing that, if I had to go that far, I would just. I would just get a different Art Snacks brush since I've been buying all these Art Snacks for years now so I should use all these items up. I love Art Snacks but it's not exactly cheap. <laughs> so I'm using the brush pen now. I'm going to do all the feathers with the brush pen, but I think stuff like the feet and the comb and the face, I will switch to my multi-liners. But for now, I like the organic lines for the more organic looking feather shapes. Uh, brush, brush pens are really super, and regular brushes too, I guess. Really super good for stuff like feathers and hair. I 
kind of wish this one was a tad bit smaller. But I can, I can work with it. Like if I wasn't limiting myself to the art snacks and October supplies, I would definitely be getting a smaller, a smaller brush. I might keep this one to use, but have a smaller one on hand as well. This is why I need a reference image for birds especially. Their feathers are so complicated. That's what I learned of doing my griffin series. My griffin illustration series. These birds are just... You think they're simple. They're like, oh, it's just a body with two legs and wings. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's a body with two legs, but even like the feet are totally different. Like it's like, rah, like our hands like are this. Their hands are like this is in the back, and then these three are in the front. But they can almost spread out like these. Like it's super crazy. I mean, not crazy and like oh, these guys are freaks of nature, but <laughs> crazy compared to drawing mammals. With mammals, you can really, once you understand the basics, you can use your own body as a reference. Because we're so similar. Like I do that a lot when I draw cats and dogs. Like if I'm trying to think of a pose and then I'll do my own arm and I'm like, oh, okay, that's where, that's how it should bend like this. You can't really do that with birds. Especially with their arms, which is to say their wings. It's just, they are amazing. They are amazing, and I have a lot to learn. I'm going to be doing more detailed inking on the body. For now, I'm just getting the main feathers and stuff. Of course, I'm also trying to keep in mind what time it is. So I need to keep this to an hour-ish. So I can work on my other products. Especially since today is Friday. And even when I think, oh, I'll just work on it over the weekend, it never happens. I'm going to be realistic with myself. Okay. So now I'm going to switch. Switch to these. What do we got here? This is the size one. Here's five and here's the eight. So we'll start with the smallest one. I can build up as necessary. Now none of these are actually hard lines here, so I'm trying to do some hatching. You don't even like chickens, but this is awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, even though you don't like chickens. Why don't you like chickens? I actually love chickens. I had chickens when I was a kid. I raised some chickens, and I raised even chicks from eggs. So really, I really want to have chickens again, just as some pets. And maybe, you know, we have a rooster so that they'll lay eggs, but... I just like taking care of chickens. I never had ducks, but I always thought it would be fun to have them too. Let's have some ducks, pet ducks. 
no reason other than just to have them around. Chicken has this really white spot on it, otherwise red area of its head. And the red part goes past its nostril and the beak. Good little chicky. Good little chicky. Oh, would you look at this? Let me get this line right here. Missing anything? Feathers right there. Oh, that's sad. Your rooster died, and then the fox ate the hens. And <laughs> you think they're funky looking. <laughs> that's so sad for your chickens. Poor chickens. Didn't want to get eaten. Well, at least the fox found a dinner. It's just the way the world works. Now this comb has lots of like, stippling texture. Thanks to the filter I put on this to get the contrast really high. I think I'll leave that and I'll move down to doing the legs here. Let's see. The chickens always have this sort of pointy pattern. Legs. Kind of like armor. It's a little pattern of scales. Yeah. Bird feet have been a really tough thing for me to get right to over the years. Like when I first started drawing, if I'd try to draw a bird, I'd just try to draw the feet without referencing. It would never look right. So I figured out how I need to look at a reference image. I just don't know birds well. Probably well, because other than chickens, you've never had like a, a pet bird that you like keep in a cage in your house. And even with the chickens, when I had those, I was so young I wasn't thinking with an artistic eye. Bird feet are nasty. <laughs> I think they're nasty when they're in those pickled jars. When they're in those jars all pickled in the store. And I'm like, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Same thing with pig feet. When I see pig feet, I'm like, ugh. It's like bird feet evolved to uh, have the dexterity of a thumb, but in a different way. Because we've got this, and then they've got just one in the back, kind of. It. Well, it's off to the side so far that they can do it around so that they can grab, like this, onto a, a branch or something. So it's like, kind of like a thumb, but it's not exactly a thumb either. Okay, I'm getting close to my ideal finish time here.
They're so funky. Yep. But the more I've drawn animals and stuff, and just learned about them, not just drawing them, but like watching nature documentaries or just appreciating photographs of animals, I think humans are the weirdest looking. We're so weird looking. <laughs> we, our proportions are so strange, especially compared to all of our like mammalian cousins. We're one of the weirdest looking things. But thanks to that, we're one of the most successful too on the planet. That's the trade-off. You can look like everybody else, or you can stand out for better or for worse. And there will be benefits that come with that. I almost forgot to draw the little claws. Moved on to the other foot. pen. This pen is not actually dead, but the longer I use it, like, overnight it seems to recharge or something, and then it's good when I first use it for the day, and then, like, by now it's not, it's not putting out any ink, and I have to really, really go over the spot. But it was the same on the other paper and this paper, so I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> But I think I'm done with that tiny pen anyway, so I'm all right. Humans are awful assholes. Yes, that's right. Sometimes I'm ashamed to be a human. Other times I just accept it. Actually, most of the time I just accept it. I just try to be the nicest I can to me and to other people and other animals and the earth in general. But sometimes I have to say, I'm the most important thing right now. I've got to make this decision based on my happiness. I'm adding hatching for. for the shadowy parts to give dimension I love hatching it's so effective and it's less if you if you make a little mistake with hatching not as destructive to the overall appearance of a piece than to make a mistake with like really black comic style black block sheeting Hatching is really forgiving Oh, you're so nice. You're so nice to me. <laughs> Say nice things to me. Thank you. And I think the same thing about you. Though I'm sure you've heard me say it a million times. Maybe not in my actual voice right now. But I think you're a rare nice human too. You're always helping people and helping animals, and you're volunteering at the... What are you volunteering at? A cat shelter? It... it... You were posting the pictures of that black kitty 
and the way it looked in the room, it reminded me a lot of the shelter that I did a charity piece for earlier this year, where it's a no-kill, no-cage cat shelter. So it's one of the most popular shelters in my area. And your picture really reminded me of that. Your pictures yesterday of that black kitty. Kitty Cottage Adoption Center. Kitty Cottage. That's so cute. Kitty Cottage. The Kitty Cottage. I don't think I processed that you named your new cat Jones. You got Ranger and Jones there. This hatching makes his wing look more fluffy. Now I'm hatching for texture rather than just shadow. So also for shadow. They are set up in rooms, but the doors are screened. No cages, but they don't have full range of the building. Yeah, that sounds exactly like um, the shelter here. Why can't I remember the name of it? It's, oh, it's called Simply Cats here. Sounds exactly the same. Jones from Aliens. Jonesy, the orange tabby. <laughs> of course, you'd name your cat after an Aliens character, I guess you could call it. <laughs> Jonesy. Jonesy. Orange tabby. Wow, chicken, you're looking good. You're looking good. I'm going to do a little, little hatching to show the... I'm using hatching for multiple reasons. Show how the, the feathers come down this way, but then they come up and down like this. I'm just gonna I'm going to show direction now. Aw, oh, you're going to make some cat beds to donate to the shelter. That's really nice. I think someone here does something like that. Uh, has made quilts or something. Little, you know, like two foot by two foot quilts for the kitties. I can't remember, but I think they might actually send the kitties, the adopted kitties home with the quilt that they've been sleeping on. If I'm remembering right, that's a good idea because then the cat can have a familiar scent in an unfamiliar place. You and Tom are both aliens nerds. <laughs> it's good that you have that in common. My sister loves aliens. My sister Arissa. I have always been scared of it. <laughs> I tried to watch it several times. And I just 
It's so scary. It's <laughs> so scary. I don't like that kind of scary. I like more like ghost movies. Or there's this anime I love called Yami Shibai and well it got kind of I don't like the third or fourth season that much, but the first season was so good. It was so creepy. That's what I like. I like creepy where and you're like, why? Why would that ever happen? And the fact that it's like unexplained and it's so scary and I love that kind of stuff. I'm doing the texture on the feathers. The back feathers are so big that they you can actually see the lines where they connect to that middle part of the feather. Chicken butts are really fluffy. Really fluffy and messy. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, I think the feathers are good enough. Now, although I, I do want to do a little bit more right here. There. Now I'm happy because that was too white right there and the light is not coming from directly underneath the chicken. Now let's do something for these legs. They've got some pretty good shadows on them too. And then feet. This is the chicken itself is casting a shadow on his feet. Also trying to use the hatching to give shape to stuff, so I'm trying to use slightly curved lines here to show the shape of these round legs and toes. I'm going to go back to this brush pen. Add some darker shadows on a few places where it may not necessarily be like this on the reference image, but for the sake of the appearance of this picture, I'm going to accentuate these areas. something else I learned in university was there's a point where you have to stop looking at the reference whatever that may be even if it's a live like person or you're looking at yourself in a mirror or something like that you know, stop looking at that and just work on the picture for the sake of the appearance of the picture I don't know if that makes sense it made sense to me 
in university. So that was a really valuable lesson. That's one of those things that makes college art school worth it. Despite the fact that having an art degree itself isn't going to land you a job. So it's one of those degrees where the experience itself is what's the most valuable. What else? How is that? Is that good? No, this needs to be a little darker on this. This two. This one has two. And this two. Let's see, that one comes out pretty good. Let's see, the shadow under this cloth. Okay, almost done. The last thing I want to do Let's use this largest size 8 millimeter to give texture. Also changing the eye a little bit. Give texture to this comb because it has a spotted sort of texture. Stippling. Trying to keep it pretty even since this is just texture and not shading. The stippling is for texture and not shading, that's what I mean. Whew. That paper is a little wobbly. I don't know how to explain it. And the wet ink that I applied for the background made the paper wavy. So sometimes my marks aren't going exactly where I want them because the paper is higher or lower than I expect by just like a millimeter or two. This is a forearm workout. Stippling. Texture is pretty even all throughout. The face has texture too, where the face is red, but not like this. It's more lines, little short lines. So I'm going to do texture there, but it'll be different than this. It'll be slightly different. Just random texture, there's a shape to it. I'll make sure to get this shape right. It's interesting to me, it's always been interesting how close, how similar bird eyes, or at least with chickens with their like not feathered faces, how similar it is to lizards. So that's an animal I did have for a while. I had two different iguanas at one point in my life. Like the way this chicken's eye is really similar, reminds me a lot of an iguana eye.
Okay, now I'm just going to erase and I'm going to be done. Yay! I'm pretty close to my hour goal. About 10 minutes over. That's a lot better than the two or three hours that I've been over other days this week. Of course, I did spend time off camera doing this sketch ahead of time. But even this sketch didn't take me as long as usual, since the drawing just an animal is more simple than drawing like a character that has a specific design and clothes and you have to figure out the lighting drawing directly from a single reference image is much faster Thank you. I'm glad you think it looks fantastic. I've gotten to the point, and I always do at this point, where I can't even, I can't really see it anymore. <laughs> I've been looking at it for so long, and especially all the little parts, that it's just, I can't. I can't see it. I don't know how to explain that phenomenon. At the point where you gotta take a break or literally step back from it and look at it from farther away or take a picture of it or find some other way to, to look at it. So make sure I don't it's easier to lose graphite in here because there's so much So much ink on here. That's both good and bad. Good because if I miss some graphite, probably no one else will notice it. Bad because I prefer to get all the graphite off. And I'll be just the slightest bit annoyed when I scan it and notice that I missed the line. <laughs> I filled it in so much this time I don't have much much room to write what it is, but I, I do have room. See where my size five. Size five. Guess I'll sign it right here. Twenty eighteen. And I've been writing. October 2018, day 5. And the prompt was chicken. Yay! I'm so happy. The first week, this is the first week of Inktober, and I have succeeded in my goal so far, which is to do a drawing each weekday and also to stream it. So we're good going. We only have three more full weeks and then a three day week, three, you know, weekdays only, three day week before the month is over. So I'm feeling really good about this. Maybe I will finally complete a whole Inktober with my own rules the first time. So that's it for today and that's it for this week. So maybe I'll see you back on Monday for the 8th Inktober prompt. I'll be back at the same time. Thank you for watching.